Hey guys, Adam with Aeroworks Productions and BlackOpsDrones.com. Today we're going to answer a very popular question that we get a lot uh, via phone calls and on Facebook. And that is, lots of cool copters out there, which one do I buy? Now that's a real common question that we get. Um, and a lot of it stems from uh, either the DJI products or the 3DR products like the Iris and the Phantom. Now there's some other players out there right now. Walkera has come out with the H500, which is a hexacopter. They've also got a brand new quadcopter coming out. These are all copters that are kind of fall within that $2,000 and under range. So those are kind of the ones we're going to be talking about today. There's also some other very good copters out there like the Steady Drone, um, the Sky Hero, and others that either require some building or come in some type of a ready-to-fly package, but they typically are in the higher price point. So we're going to talk about these today. So one of the first questions I ask people is, well, what do you want to do with it? Um, if their answer is, I just want to take aerial photos and video, any one of these is great for that. Um, the big difference between a lot of these is what type of system, what type of camera is on them, and also what type of uh, equipment do you already own? If somebody calls up and says, hey, I've got a GoPro already, I've already got an FPV system because I built a kit previously, then I'll probably point them to something like the Iris or the, or the DJI Phantom with the Zenmuse combo. Both of these can be set up with a GoPro, with a gimbal, and you have the ability to transmit that video down to something like a monitor or a set of goggles. Uh, another popular copter is the Phantom Vision uh, Plus. Now this is great if you don't own any equipment. You don't have a camera. You don't have an FPV system. Um, it comes with everything you need. You do need a smartphone or a tablet to view the video. Um, it's a great copter for that. It's actually probably the most popular quadcopter on the market in the world right now. Um, the downsides to this is it does have somewhat of a fragile camera on it. Now that's something you have to keep in mind. These are not toys. Uh, when you go out and fly these, if you have no experience, don't go out and buy a $1,200 quadcopter to learn how to fly on. They're very precise motors, bearings, and, and lightweight materials on there, and they don't survive a crash very well. Now that being said, the bodies, the airframe is very rugged, the props are easily replaceable, but things like gimbals on any of these are going to be delicate, and you need to keep that in mind. All right, the next big determining factor in choosing your copter is flight time. How much flight time do you actually need to do what you want to do with your copter? Now, the DJI product says they have a 25-minute battery, while Kara says about 25 minutes. The new Iris Plus has an 18- to 20-minute battery. So why would I want to go with a copter that has an 18- to 20-minute battery when I can get one that has a 25-minute battery? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. First off, the DJI battery, which is an intelligent battery, meaning that it has a built-in battery uh, checker uh, as well as other smart circuitry, 25-minute flight time. It's really more like 18 to 20 minutes. This is a $130 battery, so it's going to take a, a lot of money to buy a lot of extra batteries with the Phantom. The Iris battery, it's a 5100 milliamp battery. This is $39.99, so you can buy quite a few Iris batteries for what it costs you to buy one DJI battery. So let's look at the other pros and cons, pluses and minuses. The Iris is a fully autonomous quadcopter, meaning that you can do fully autonomous waypoints. You can do auto takeoff, auto landing, 3D mapping, surveying. You can control it with something like the Pebble Watch or a tablet. The stock Phantom 2 does not have any waypoint capability. You can add the Bluetooth data link, which will give you waypoints using an iPad. Or if you go with the Vision series, they do have included in the package 16 waypoints, and you have some limited uh, adjustments with that. You can adjust height, and you can adjust the, adjust the speed at which it travels to those waypoints. So you have to look at what's important to you uh, and what you plan on doing with it. Let's talk about something called safety and what a lot of people ignore when they buy these products. A lot of people, because the price point has come down into the serious hobby or toy range, they assume that they're just simple products to use and there's hardly any knowledge that you need to use them. That's totally the opposite of the, of the true case. So keep in mind, these have very advanced flight controllers in them. And they do require some knowledge of how to use a PC, how to read the manual, how to do compass calibrations, and how to look for natural environmental uh, obstructions and things like that. So one of the things you always want to do when you go out to a new location is scout the location out. Am I near a cell tower? Am I near trees or power lines or a power plant? Is there a uh, TV station antenna nearby? These are all reasons that might throw up a red flag and say, 
I might not want to fly here, or at minimum, when I take off, I'm going to hover right at three feet and make sure that everything looks 100%. This is something that's not being done by a lot of people, and they go right to blaming the product, and that doesn't matter if it's 3DR or DJI or anybody. You have to know the limitations. You have to know what's going to make these things uh, get affected by frequencies and things like that. And you need to do what it says in the manual. There's a lot of good information in the manual. And unfortunately, I'm on the forums a lot and I see a lot of questions asked that are so simple if they would just read even the quick start guides in most of the manuals that comes with these. So it's very important that you don't treat these as toys. They're very sophisticated aircraft. And in some cases, they have as sophisticated systems in them as some real aircraft do. So you have to think of, your, think of it this way. Could I go jump in a 747 and take off and just fly it without any training? No, you couldn't. So don't treat these like uh, a, a toy. You have, to, you have to do a little research. You have to do some homework. Get with somebody that knows how to fly them. Take an online course. Uh, definitely read the manual and uh, know that they do take some knowledge of computers and the different frequencies that we use here. You need to have a little bit of knowledge of how all that works. Let's talk about another very popular option for the beginner, and that's building a kit. Now, both 3D Robotics and DJI have kit builds that come with everything you need. Flight controller, the airframe, the motors, the ESCs, some cases radios, some cases you have to buy your own radio. And these can be had for as little as $200, $300. This particular one here is the 3DR Y6. This comes in a complete kit. Uh, you get everything you need to build it, minus your radio and battery. Um, and these can be had for, you know, three, four hundred dollars for a kit like this. DJI makes a flame wheel. They make a 450 and a 550. Those are in the two to three to four hundred dollar range, depending on which components you put on it. So that's a very good way for a beginner to start out. Learn how everything goes together. Learn what the flight controller is doing, which direction the motors spin. And in cases like the Y6 here, where you have this more open frame, you can get to all those components easily. So if you do have a crash, you can take something off, you can replace it, you can learn how it works, and then it's, a best, it's one of the best ways to do it. And you don't have to worry about breaking the more expensive copters. Um, a lot of times, in the case of the Y6, this is the same Pixhawk flight controller that's in the Iris. So if you get used to how to update firmware and do programming on this one, you're going to be able to do it on the Iris down the road. And that's the same case for the DJI products. All right, so now let's narrow it down a little bit and talk about two of the most popular quadcopters out there right now. And that's the DJI Phantom and the 3DR Iris Plus. What do you get with them out of the box and what are you going to need to get going to do aerial photography and video? We'll start with the Phantom 2 first. So you're going to get a battery, charger, the quadcopter. And in this case, on the Zenmuse combo, you're going to get the... Zenmuse 3D Gimbal. Now you're not going to get a GoPro, you're going to have to provide a GoPro, and you're not going to get an FPV system or an OSD on-screen display. So these are all additional items you're going to have to have as well as either a monitor or goggles or you can fly with both to have a true fully flying uh, aerial package. So out of the box you're going to have the quadcopter, one battery, a very simple radio, and your gimbal Again, you're going to need to purchase a GoPro, you're going to need to purchase an FPV system, and an OSD if you want to have on-screen display. With the Iris out of the box, you're going to get a very nice 9-channel radio with telemetry. You're going to get the quadcopter, battery charger, telemetry radios, meaning you can transmit that telemetry data to the ground via either a phone, tablet, smartphone device, or laptop. Um, you are going to get out of the box a fixed GoPro mount. You're not going to get a gimbal in this package, but it does have provisions right out of the box from the factory to mount up your gimbal to power and, ha and control the tilt with the knob uh, for your gimbal. Now, what most people do with the Iris to bring it up to the Phantom is they put the gimbal on there, they put an FPV system, which we sell an all-in-one FPV system for it, and then that GoPro gets moved to the bottom and now you've really got kind of apples to apples. The big differences, again, are the flight time, 18 to 20, 25. Cheaper battery, more expensive battery. Fully autonomous, no autonomous capabilities unless you add the limited waypoints to it. Full featured radio, which also has telemetry down here now. So you don't even have to have your tablet or your smartphone. You can actually view battery life, battery usage, 
GPS signal, GPS waypoints, and so on on the radio. Very nice packages to get started in this industry. $749 for the Iris, like it sits right here. Uh, about seven to 800 like this one sits without the GoPro. Again, the FPV system and OSD is going to be extra. And if you're not good or you don't feel comfortable doing soldering in that, you're going to have to have somebody do it. That's something that we do offer at Black Ops Drones. We sell complete packages on either of these. Uh, on the Spec Ops kit that we do provide with the Iris, that's a fully loaded Iris, gimbal, uh, FPV system, extra batteries, extra props, hard shell case, fully tested, upgraded, and test flown. And same thing with our filmmaking package on the DJI Phantom. That's going to come with the Zenmuse gimbal, FPV system, completely soldered and installed inside. The OSD is inside. You don't have a lot of extra stuff hanging on legs. We remove the CAN bus from the front leg. We streamline it up. Um, we do have a company that does provide wraps if you want a custom wrap uh, for both the radio and the uh, Phantom. Outside of that, the only other options are whether or not you want to look at the uh, video image through goggles or you want to use something like our HD diversity monitor. In the case of either of these, the Immersion RC 600 milliwatt transmitter that we use, you can actually transmit the image to both at the same time. So if you have a director or a friend that wants to use goggles while you fly using the monitor or vice versa, you could. Well, hopefully we've been able to answer a few of your questions. I know there's probably a lot more questions out there. And feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section. And if you have a question, you can either use our contact us page at blackopsdrones.com or send us a message to YouTube. We answer pretty quickly. All of these items, uh, pretty much all of them are available on our website at blackopsdrones.com. And we can also pretty much order uh, anything you want or custom build anything you want. So if you don't see something on the website, just shoot us an email or use the contact us page to get a hold of us. Appreciate you guys' time and hope this helps you out. And uh, blue skies and good luck.